Welcome to Kentucky Tonight. Good evening, I'm Renee Shaw. Tonight we'll discuss national and state politics. Our guests are Trey Grayson, former Republican Kentucky Secretary of State and former director of the Harvard Kennedy School's Institute of Politics. Jonathan Miller, former Democratic State Treasurer and former chair of the Kentucky Democratic Party. Julia Bright Krigler, Republican consultant and founder of Bright Strategies and Democratic consultant Matt Irwin. We invite your questions and comments tonight. Join the conversation on Twitter at KYTonightKET. Send an email to KYTonight at KET.org. Use the web form at KET.org slash KYTonight. Make sure to check the box that says you're not a robot or you may give us a call at 1-800-494-7605. Please include your first and last name and town or county on all messages. Good evening, gentlemen, lady. Thank you for joining us. We're going to try to cover lots of ground and we hope that there's no late breaking news while yeah. we're on the air. So somebody <laughs> keep the refresh button going yeah. on your smart device. We'll talk about some developments that broke in Frankfurt today a little later on. But let's talk about tomorrow. We're about 24 hours away from when the Alabama, uh, Alabama polls close in that special U.S. Senate race between uh, accused child molester Roy Moore, the Republican, and Democrat Doug Jones. Uh, over the weekend, President Trump made robocalls on behalf of Mr. Moore. Um, on Sunday, the GOP senator from Alabama uh, Richard Shelby said he couldn't support more because Alabamans deserve better. So I'm going to go to the Republicans <laughs> first. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Thank you, Merry Christmas. Uh, <laughs> to ask you, uh, what's the political calculus behind the president coming out and giving an endorsement to Roy Moore? Was that wise in your opinion? Well, you know, in his mind, there's, I think there's a couple things at play. I mean, one is this is a guy who never does sort of what he's supposed to do and he's this view that he got elected by not following the rules and the rules the traditional rules of politics would say you distance yourself from this guy you cut him off uh, just like Senator Shelby did mm -hmm. and that's and what he was I, advised to yeah reportedly yeah yeah and, that, and that's what I would have done too but you know Trump plays by a different set of rules my guess is he also feels like he's probably gonna win and so if he does something mm -hmm. it looks like you know Trump being Trump and then then more wins and when everybody else abandoned him at the national level the president was there for him and he's really I think speaking more to that that group of voters that elected Trump inside right. that party uh, kind of this populist movement and who who have not really sh had their support for more shaken um, and so that's the gamble now if more loses Trump's gonna look really bad worse than if he just uh, stayed on the sideline is it worth it Ms. Krigler for President Trump to wage such a bet and to put in so much possible political capital in Look, this situation given the circumstances. I think conventional wisdom would say if you're a Republican and you're running for office in Alabama, you're going to win. Um, I think that conventional wisdom holds true tomorrow. Um, unfortunately, I think the choice that voters are faced with in Alabama is do they choose in this situation to elect someone who Mitch McConnell has made very clear will not be able to be effective in the United States Senate and has um, has also furthermore said he, he intends to immediately start a Senate ethics investigation. Mm -hmm. Now, a Supreme Court ruling in 1969, Powell versus McCormick, states that they pretty much have to seat him once he's sworn in and takes the oath of office. So he has to be seated. Um, but what happens after that can really follow the path of a Senate uh, ethics investigation, which can lead to censure. Right. Do you think censure would be the likely outcome? Would Senator Leader McConnell go that far? I, I think they would follow the investigation mm -hmm. where, where it takes them. And if, if ultimately it's determined that these allegations are correct, I have full faith that Senator McConnell would follow through on those recommendations. You know, Mr. Miller, I think it was Chuck Todd who said during the Sunday talk shows that if Roy Moore is elected, he'd be the most famous U.S. Senator, sitting <laughs> U.S. Senator. Now, what do Democrats do about that and they've got their own issues uh, just talk about what this does for the institution and how Democrats can if they can uh, come out the victor in this situation well you know I it, in one sense it's really depressing I mean the the past few months have been just a, 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 a the reality of, of what goes on in Washington and Frankfurt and across the country and uh, uh, to uh, to women uh, now to young girls is is uh, is truly frightening and, and horrifying. Um, 
I, I do think, though, there is a lot of good that can come out of this. Uh, all of this education is, uh, I think, going to pave the way, once we get through this really ugly period, I think pave the way for, for men treating women uh, the way they deserve to be treated and they ought to be treated. And, and I think that this is helping set that path uh, where kids growing up these days will, will know that. I think Democrats might, in the back of their minds, some might think oh, we see an advantage here, just like every, um, every uh, Democrat who ran for office here in Kentucky, his last name was Obama. Um, I think uh, every Republican who runs in the next cycle's last name will be Roy Moore and, and will be tied to that. Uh, obviously, Democrats don't have completely clean hands yeah, in this. Because um, you've got your Conyers and your Franken. And right. but, I, but I do think that uh, you know, there has been an effort, particularly without Franken, um, to, uh, um, to say, okay, we're going to draw this, this line in the sand, even though Franken's behavior was not as as horrible as Roy Moore's. It was bad, and we're going to draw this line in the sand, and Democrats are going to uh, take a stand on these sorts of issues and cut, uh, cut loose uh, people who have uh, such a, a horrible background. Matt Irwin, do you think that's effective and that that'll work, <clears throat> that you cut loose those who are perpetrators and you move forward? Well, I, uh, when it comes to Senator Franken, or now Al Franken, I, I'm proud to see that he was sort of frog marched out. I mean, I was a fan, read his books, liked them. Mm -hmm. Uh, liked his policies, but when it came to light, what he did, I think that his fellow members of the Democratic caucus did the exact right thing, which just showed him the door. And I think that hopefully there's some kind of precedent set. Uh, and when it comes to, to Congressman Conyers, I mean, longest serving member of the House, and it took not too long to get him out the door, and I was happy to see that. When it comes to Roy Moore, um, you know, there are Democrats that think this will, you know, if he wins, this will be great, then we can use this politically. I mean, it makes me sick to think that he could get in the United States Senate after what has been, you know, credibly revealed about his past. That said, even if he doesn't, I think that you really can't unring the Roy Moore bell. Um, you got the president that stood by him lockstep, I mean, kind of doubled down on his support of him, said he didn't believe these women. Uh, and I think most shocking, the RNC put money back into the race after they cut him off. So they decided that after everything that had come out, they took their money away and then they saw a chance to win, put that money back. Money from the RNC might in fact become radioactive to some candidates because now you can make a credible argument that you're, you're an taking- establishment. Yeah, sure. You're, ta you're, you're taking money from the folks mm -hmm. that financed Roy Moore's campaign. That, that's gonna be a, a big issue to people that had nothing to do with Roy Moore, but you know, RNC money is now a little toxic. Yeah. What's toxic interesting is the Senate money. committee still didn't put money back in, but the RNC, that's right, did did put money in. And the RNC is the entity that President Trump has much greater influence. Mm -hmm. President of the party, regardless, you know, has a lot of say um, over the state, over the national party, and just like governors have the say over the state party. But the funds that Senator McConnell has control of did not go back into that state. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to point out too. Uh, Trump is definitely making political calculations on this. In the primary, he supported Luther Strange. Right. Um, so that, I mean, it's clearly not a particularly principled stance there to support Roy Moore. It's kind of where the, where the wind's at his back. Given that President Trump had allegations of sexual misconduct leveled against him as well, if all of this had come out this time last year, would there have been a President Trump, you think? Well, I mean, a lot of the Trump stuff did come out loud. I mean, I mean but uh, with all these other allegations, if all of, if all oh. of the, the media and uh, from Bill O'Reilly to Matt Lauer oh, to Mark okay, Halper, yeah. if all of that yes. happened it's a, in the this, same year. This is a very, I mean, I think a good example is what's going on in Frankfurt. If that had happened a year ago versus mm -hmm. today, for example, I don't, you know, I, I'm not sure people would react the same way. So, yeah, I think for the better, the country has decided we're not going to tolerate this stuff. More victims are... You know, coming forward. I mean, kudos to Kentucky's Ashley Judd for really starting this whole thing with her willingness to speak up against Harvey Weinstein mm -hmm. and being that first woman to go forward and leading that uh, New York Times front page story. Um, she deserves, alert, deserves a lot of credit, won an award over the weekend for it. And on the cover of Time magazine yeah. as the person of the person year, of the, the year. silence breakers. I'm, yeah. I'm the one supposed to be praising Ashley. So Only I'm, in this context. <laughs> hey, and it's, in it's basketball a context. Yeah. But, but, but Renee, I, I don't think the... Uh, I don't think the, the what we have seen with Harvey Weinstein would have happened had we not had uh, Donald Trump the year yeah. before. I think mm -hmm. what happened with Donald Trump the year before and, and him perfect. getting away with it um, has raised the temperature, uh, made so many people angry. My, my, uh, my wife and daughters, uh, who really are not that political, probably because I was political when they were <laughs> growing up, 
um, got were, were just heartbroken after the the election, not because a, a, a Democrat lost or a Republican won, but because they are very passionate about domestic violence and about e equality for women, and were just completely destroyed by that uh, by by Trump getting away with that. And I think that helped educate uh, what happened with Harvey Weinstein and then what's happening today. Mm -hmm.